So I decided to come closer to you today. I won't do this each Sunday, but I felt like today needed to have a bit more of a, um, a community talk, if you will. You know, um, this call comes at a time right, I think at a, at a, you know, when you look back at it, you're gonna go, wow, God's hand was woven through this. I, I really believe that. Um, this call comes after, for you, you hear this, after we have gone through three weeks of hearing what it means to become the children of God, to become the people of God. You're hearing this after we have listened to two stories, two sermons on what it means to hear God call us and how sometimes we aren't listening and why we aren't listening. And it also comes right as we are beginning this series that's called um, a disciple's path. What it means to be a disciple as a United Methodist. Now, I remember putting this together, deciding what we were going to do, way before I got the call from the DS. And I remember thinking, this is not quite what I would do, but okay, I, I sense God moving this way. And, and now that I see it, I'm like, wow, I'm hoping that this is going to help all of us. It already has helped me. Um, as United Methodists, this series, it's truth be told, there are two reasons why we're doing this series. One, it is the book that I use when I am bringing in new members. So if you have become a new member of this congregation while I've been here, you've already gone through this book. And uh, I have found this book to be very helpful. And I didn't, I knew I wasn't gonna have time to do a, um, a new member series and there are people who wanted to become members. And so I thought, well, instead of having a new members class, I'll ask Mel to teach this class and then <laughs> whoever is in that class will learn what it means to be United Methodist and to be a Green Valley United Methodist and then talk with me and then, they, then we'll have a membership re receive members. So, so hey, if, if you want to transfer your membership or become a member here, you know, go to Mel's class, the adult Sunday school class. Um, the other reason is, is that um, you all may know, if, especially if you are a Methodist, United Methodist nerd, that there's a general conference coming up and it's a lot of tension. It has been for many times. And that there is, a, during COVID, a group of um, people pulled out to call themselves global Methodists. And so they're more of a conservative group. Uh, than, than we are as United Methodist. So what I wanted to have happen was for us to get into the foundation of our souls, what it means to be United Methodist, so that when those questions come, um, you can go back to this book to help you. There's a third reason. This membership book, class book, helps you to become a disciple not just a member of a club, not one that you can go to college, you're all past college age, but you know, not to be able to go to college and say, I'm a member of this church or whatever organization you, know, you wanna become a, an employee of, I have, I'm a membership of this church. This helps you become a l disciple of Christ that means that you are growing in your faith, that your actions are growing deeper and deeper. It's a organic live experience that we have as disciples. So that's why I put all that in place. And, and I know that God, God was directing that. When I begin a class, um, I, and, and Jill and Robin have been helping me at some of these classes. We go around, Jill and I start, 
who we are and uh, how we got to be here, and we tell our story. Jill has a story, Robin has a story, we all have a story how we became members or friends of uh, Green Valley United Methodist Church. I'm gonna ask Ryan, this is in, Ryan has no idea what I'm gonna say, and truth be told, I do not know either. I wrote so many sermons this week for today that I went to bed saying I have no idea what I'm gonna say tomorrow. So, Ryan, if you could put that tree up, that would be really great. Oh, not that tree. That's that tree, there. I don't know what you can see in that, but if you really, really wanna know what's on that tree, uh, go to the class and you'll get a handout for that. As you can see that our church history tree starts at the bottom with the uh, Judaism, the Old Testament, and then it comes through Jesus, and there's all these branches that come in. And so I ask people in the class, who, who are you? Where did you come in? What kind of uh, faith tradition do you come from? What kind of faith tradition does your great-grandmother come from? Were they Roman Catholic? Were they Eastern Orthodox? I had someone in a class, one church, that was Armenian. And so then you're like, well, what does that mean to you? So then why did you move for that to come to United Methodist? And so... Um, I won't tell Robin and Jill's stories. Uh, maybe they'll share them sometime. But my, I came into this branch. You'll see United Methodist way up there where it says Methodist, up at the top. On your side, it'd be the right. So they come from the Anglican, from England. And there's all about John Wesley, and you can learn about that. There's a history uh, handout that will be given. Um, and I come from the other side of the tree where it's the Reformation. My ancestors were Anabaptists. I became Methodist from the Anabaptist tradition, which is a peace tradition, which is a, a church that believed a certain way. They did not want to give their money to the government, et cetera, for different reasons. And they were persecuted, my in particular, were persecuted in the Switzerland um, border of Germany. Persecuted by other Christians. And so because of that, we, as a family, all just, you know, this was... I don't know what, when it was, the 1700s, moved to Pennsylvania where William Penn gave us some land. Actually, a land was called Brubaker Valley, and that happens to be my maiden name. So how cool is that? So I've been in that stream for a long, long time. And then when I went to seminary, all of a sudden I realized I'm much more... Um, traditional in my liturgy. I'm all about this pervenient grace. And people in my class were like, you know, you sound Methodist. Have you thought about that? And did an internship as a United Methodist intern at a large church. And the pastor goes, you sound like a Methodist pastor. So there you go. Um, Here's some things, I, 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 there's a lot of things, but one thing that I wasn't really understanding was the itineracy. I knew that we would get, you know, appointed. That made sense to me, because as a woman, you're not called to churches. I'm gonna always miss your laugh, Mel. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't get called. And from my tradition and from many of those branches, their congregational polity is that the church goes, okay, we vote this year, we don't want this pastor. And it's usually a yearly thing and that's what happened to my father until he moved it to every three years and then they would vote and you'd, you'd come home and go, did they all vote for you? And it was the whole church voting. And that gets really hairy when you realize that some people voted no and some people voted yes and then you still have to go to church with them. You know what I mean? That was just like really, as a kid especially. And, and when there is a pool of people to come to be a pastor, if you're a woman or a person of color, you're not chosen from that pool 99% of the time. 
And I could go into that. So this appointment system to me is very helpful in that there's a group of people that vet our, our gifts and our graces and we go through seminary, but yes, we have to also see how are we in that whole realm of what does it mean to be a United Methodist in that grace realm. And as I um, have come to understand it, I, I have come to value it. So here's what happens, and this is what I will tell, would tell a membership class. January 1st, if not before, the cabinet, the DSs, the district superintendents, and the bishop will figure out how many churches uh, the pastors have retired, all right? So if they retired, there they go. I don't know if they go on a board up on a wall or, or what they do. Is it a dart board? I'm not sure. It's there. There's the church that needs a pastor because that pastor has retired. And so right in the beginning, they start to look for a person to go into that space. They go to the church. They say, what are your needs? Who are you looking for? Um, they can never say, we want a woman no, they never would say that. They would never say they want a man that's 35. Doesn't work that way. You might always want to have a 35-year-old man with three lovely kids and a wife that will play the piano, but that's just not the way we go. We go by our gifts and our graces. And I was asked to come to this church because... Uh, I guess Dan figured I had something to offer you all. And I think it's been an amazing, amazing experience. You have helped me grow as a person and as a pastor. I feel stronger emotionally as a pastor. I feel stronger emotionally as a person. My spiritual um, life has grown because of being your pastor. I've appreciated your support verbally. And even this last week, uh, in the last couple of days, people calling and saying, I'm praying for you. One person said, wow, they must really need you. And another one said, show them what you got, girl. And so those, those things come to play, but it's always um, very difficult. Change is difficult. Life can be difficult. But the good news is, God is always with us. I don't have any idea, I do not, and you've heard me preach this many times, I do not believe that everything happens for a reason. I do not believe that. What I do believe is that things happen and God is with us. I do believe that as I look back, I can say, wow, God, you orchestrated that. There was a spiritual experience in that, but I'm not going to go looking for all these little reasons why. Here's what happened um, for me. On, um, on the 13th, Saturday evening, the 13th, right before I was going to begin teaching you about the call. God is always speaking. Are you listening? And I had just re finished the final revision of my sermon, which I work, revise, revise a lot. I put my laptop down and um, I, I got a, the, the phone call came. Now, I want to tell you, I had just added the phrase, I had no idea why I added this phrase, God is still speaking, still calling, and then I wrote, sometimes God calls us when we have settled into a rhythm that we find comfortable. And I was like, because I think about all of you. So when you don't come and, and I look at the pew and you're, I like you to be in your same seats, that works for me. And so I'm thinking about all of you and I'm like, I wonder who needs to hear that. Some of you weren't here that day, so you may have missed it. But anyway, I thought, who's gonna hear that phrase? And the phone rings and it's Timote, our district superintendent. And I have been waiting to hear from him because we're having a church leadership uh, 
training and Lila wanted to know how many people were coming so she would have enough food. And so I was like, hey, Timote, how's it going? How many people are coming? Because it's Saturday night and I want to go to bed and I don't really want to talk. And um, he goes, thank you for answering the phone call. And I may have been Timote's first person to have this kind of conversation because he's new. And um, I was like, oh, something's up. And then he said that the bishop and the cabinet have had your name on the table, and we are discerning that your gifts and graces are needed in the district, the South District. Well, I was shocked. Um, I started pacing. Charlie started nipping at my legs. I didn't know what to do, and um, I was like, I'm liking it here. You know I like it here. Not just like it, I feel like I'm doing good work. And he said, you are doing good work, but we need your good work somewhere else. And then I'm like, well, the first thing was, what about Ash? Here's the other thing about pastors. We don't know what's going to happen, and it's not a shock value or anything. They're not trying to like, it's not a they and us. They're working together for us to all work together. It's not the boogeyman out there. And so Ash, I was like, well, what about Ash? And so Ash is going to come live with me, and we're praying. Please pray that they will find a church for Ash to be at. So I had lots of voices inside, and I'm telling you this because this is like the anatomy of a call. If we're listening, if we're listening for God, like the man, uh, the Native American who was listening for the crickets and anything else but the people that I told you in that story, we will hear God's still small voice. And because our world is so full of distractions, it's often much quieter than all the other voices that are saying, but you remember you promised Troy that you would stay here forever? And, um, and then um, I know that someone else is gonna think, um, well, I know Tucson is your favorite spot, so I, I bet you want it to go. And no, I did not say yes to the DS because we plan to, um, retire there. I said yes because there's this voice inside that's saying, Mary, this, this, we, this is for you. We need you. Do you remember the next Sunday we talked about Jonah, right? Jonah got a call to um, Nineveh. Well, in some ways, you're my Tarshish. I would love to be here I don't wish anything bad on um, Vista de la Montaña, which it took me, Eric, three weeks to say that. I thought I was going to have to say just Vista because, you know. But I don't wish ill of them, but I don't want to start again. You know, I don't want to start with someone who might think that I'm too too conservative. Some people might think that. Many people think I'm too liberal. So how do you like do that? And, and you know, it's going to take a lot. And so I cover your prayers. Um, we all like comfort. We all like to be happy. We as United Methodists know that we are only appointed for one year at a time. If you asked me, and some of you have in the last year, when are you going to move? When are you going to be reappointed? How long are you going to be here? And I would always say, I am appointed for one year, but I desire to be here. There's nothing behind your backs that I asked anybody to please move me to Tucson. Ash and I thought that we were going to retire, or this was going to be, I don't know, somebody said it, this was going to be your last gig. I don't remember what they said, but um, something like that. And that, yeah, that's kind of like where we were at. Um, so that's that. And I also have become to think, oh, I have to tell you this. This has been a hard three weeks. The first Sunday, um, Lindsay had us singing the summons. It's not in our blue hymnal. 
But, uh, you know, maybe we could get, go Google summons lyrics and read them. God will speak to you. And I had to sing in front of you, a bit disassociated as I was singing it, will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Oh my gosh. Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? No, I want to be just like I am here, God. Will you risk the hostile stare and should your life attract or scare? Sometimes I can be scary to people and I don't really know why. Um, thank you for not being scared of me and um, seeing my direct, directive ways as a positive. I said yes because I don't want to be like Jonah. You read the whole book of Jonah, Jonah never gets it right. <laughs> Jonah gets to the belly of the whale and says, I'm okay, I'm gonna change. And then he still does it his way. Life is so much better for the people that you are ministering to and you are all ministers. I am your pastor, but you are all ministers in your realm. And life is so much better when we're doing that than when we're doing it our way. When we're listening to God, it's better. The other voices that were in my head was, well, there's still closets to clean and we wanna do a capital campaign and we need to hire a children and youth person and, and, and yet, I had to hear God say, but that's not going to be your role now. Somebody else can do that. And that somebody else in all of those could be one of you. One of you. My call to move out, I believe, is also a release for your, to answer your call. Not to come to Tucson and live with me and laugh at my jokes, um, although I'd love for you to visit, but to um, hear what God wants from you. Not to leave the church to go to another church, but to do those little things, like when you see a weed out in the parking lot, pluck that thing. When you hear of a, of a need to increase um, our financial giving, ask God, how can I do that? Do I need to improve on that? When you, um, are, you need to join a, an adult Sunday school class because it's in those kind of groups that you learn and grow and grow deeper. That is what this whole series is going to be about, growing deeper. You know, when you were a, um, I don't know, six months old, you started to eat um, cream of rice, right? Does anyone else eat cream of rice? Some of you might eat cream of rice in the morning. But you have, at dinner time, moved up to chewier food, right, Barry? <laughs> um, and so that's the thing about us as in our spiritual life. We all were praying, God is great, God is good, and we thank God for our food. But heavens, I hope now you have moved into your prayer life. We're going to talk about that, moving in deeper in all those different areas of being a disciple so that our actions actually show that we are patient, that we are kind, that we are not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Anybody have need to keep growing in that? That's your call. And you're doing it here because you need each other to help do that. Well, there you go. I don't have anything else. Um, and uh, you all know how important it is for me to craft a sermon with words and stuff, and I don't, didn't have that here. And I would love for you to ask me questions, to have a question and answer time, but we don't have time for that. But what I'm asking from you at this time is to ask God, where do you need me to dig deeper? Do I need to, um, what is the volunteering that you see on the signs that I need to sign up for? Do I love kids? Sign up to help kids. Are you good at organizing? Sign up to 
uh, call um, helping Lena and I call uh, members to say, hey, we haven't seen you. Do you sense that you're still a member? That kind of thing. Do you, do you sing? Especially if you're a male. <laughs> we have great men here, three men singing wonderfully, and a, and a lovely woman who sings bass too. But, you know, sign up. Ask God, how do you want me to participate in this congregation? Because you are the church. And I will pray for you to find that the leader who comes will be one that is a servant leader, one that is listening to God now. And you pray for that too. Because somebody's going to get a call like I got a call right? And someone's going to have those same voices in their head and say, I don't want to move to Vegas, that they have a reputation, whatever it is. Believe me, I had my thoughts, but it's not anything like that. Um, they're not going to want to move, period. It's too, do too hard. So pray for them that they can hear that small voice inside that's going to say, oh, my gifts are needed there. I ask that you pray for Ash, too. And if you know him, send him a little note that says, Hey, Ash, God has something for you. I ask that you pray for the, um, the bishop in the cabinet. In fact, every January, start praying for them. Because you know what? When you have, so now they have one church that's going to be filled. Okay, they have that one down. Now they have Green Valley and they have Advent. And now where are they going to find the next group of people to put in those spaces? It's a lot of work. And also, this is very important, and I'm glad I thought of this because I wanted to share this. This is a grief experience. I have been in this for three weeks. I was not myself when I came all those three weeks. I, I was numb. Grief, sometimes you experience numbness. And oftentimes you experience anger. Be angry at God, okay? God can take it. But be, if you're angry, be angry. If you're sad, be sad. Feel your feelings. Don't hurt each other in it, though. And support one another. Um, and I, I love you. I love each of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dixie. Let me offer a prayer for all of us, and I thank you, Jill, for your prayer this morning. Lord God, you called many people in the past history. You're calling people today. There are other churches that are hearing this announcement across the whole United Methodist um, denomination. There are people who are sad and there are people who maybe are even relieved. And, and yet this is a change. This is a tearing apart, this wovenness that we've had, this like fabric that has, has been woven together is now um, splitting. And we ask, oh God, that your spirit would be with each of us. May we be drawn closer to you. May we be drawn closer to one another. May we experience your grace and your peace. And may our hope really be in Christ. Encircle us in your love and your care. Help us to be living, active disciples of Jesus. And because of Jesus, I pray. Amen.